All right. Good morning. Hi, everybody. It's Monday, 730. Good morning. It's Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs, and I'm so excited you're here. Thanks for joining me every week. And, um, you know, I'm wondering if you guys are ready for this message today. I, I want to ask you a question. Uh, I get asked this question a lot. Um, people ask me if I'm always this positive. <laughs> and I say to myself, nope, I'm not. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about this controversial topic, controversial topic of positivity. So I hope you're ready for this this morning. Um, and yes, it's early. I, I intend to have this message with you every week early enough so that you can take a few minutes think about what we're talking about and make a decision about how you want to spend not only the rest of your day, uh, but the rest of your week too. So we're going to talk about the, um, the habit of positivity. And I want to talk to you today about how you can cultivate that. And, you know, I do get asked if I'm always this positive and the answer is no. Uh, I'm human just like everybody else. And so I work at this positive mindset. It's a choice because for me, uh, the alternative is not as exciting. I would rather look at things with some optimism and maintain um, a positive outlook on things than to always see the glass half empty or to feel like I have things to complain about or worry about. And so this is not going to be a lecture at all. This is just going to be an opportunity for you to do some self-reflection. Is that okay? Let me know if you're with me in the chat on Facebook. I want to thank those of you who are with me on Zoom. Um, just let me know if it's okay if we have this conversation, because I think that we live in a challenging time. We live in a world that's always changing. We also live in a world that's exciting and diverse and has a lot of opportunity. And so we have a lot of information coming out us and you know what we're thinking is going to reflect on how we're feeling and how we're feeling is going to reflect on what we're thinking and so negativity is out there it's kind of like um the tiger that's laying out there in the bushes of the jungle and the negativity that's out there uh it could be ready to pounce on you at any time and so we can't eliminate negativity from our world. So if you're taking notes, write that down. We can't eliminate negativity from our world. But what we can do is choose how we process it. And we can make or choose to make positive experiences from it and allow that to really stay with us. Because a lot of times negativity, I, I've described it kind of like Velcro, uh, it's sticky. So negative words, negative thoughts, they can really stick to you. And so we want to, to really have a little bit more of a Teflon coating when it comes to negativity and allow the positivity to stick to us, right? So we're going to take a little bit of a deep dive on this. And, um, you know, I'm here to answer questions, listen to what your thoughts are on the, the topic. Um, but I think that we have the ability to make a choice about how we show up in the world and also how we process things happening around us and whether or not we're going to allow that to affect us negatively or not. So we're thinking all day long, right? We're thinking, we're processing, our thoughts are with us. And 80%, this is what research has shown, 80% of our thoughts are negative. That's true for the average person. So if we have, you know, on average, anywhere between 30 to 60,000 thoughts per day, imagine that 80% of them could be negative. And the other thing that research has revealed is that 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. In other words, our thinking is on a loop. Who's with me on that, right? You know that there are certain thoughts that you just think over and over again, thoughts about yourself, thoughts about other people, situations, the world, whatever it might be, they tend to be on a loop. So break that down. 80% of our thoughts can be negative and 94% of our thoughts can be repetitive. We're in this like constant flow of negativity if we don't break the cycle, if we don't allow ourselves to create some better habits, right? And so the thing is our brains are just wired 
And, and they're, they're, our brains are wired in a way that allows for that repetition. So if that is true, can we re rewire our thinking so that the loop becomes more positive? Can we change the pattern of our thoughts so that we're not stuck in a negative space or creating negative bias against ourselves or other people or situations? And can we put ourselves into the habit of thinking with more optimism, of thinking with more positivity, with more possibility, and allow ourselves to move out of that, that pattern, right? Because here's the thing, negative bias is there. It plays a big role in our lives, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. And it's why we can't stop thinking about that one piece of critical feedback we got, whether it was from our boss or our third grade teacher, right? It sticks with us. And even if we're not replaying the exact conversation, we're replaying the effects of that conversation. And so if we are going to really move forward and live our lives in a way that is much more fulfilling. And if we're gonna open ourselves to our own potential, we've got to step out of those, those old patterns and really break into some new ways of thinking. So rather than getting ourselves upset over certain things that are not going our way, how can we reframe our thinking? And, th and this goes beyond those great quotes that we've heard, like, um, what is that? One positive thought in the morning can change our whole day. It's true, but I want to take this into something much more practical. I want for you to understand that you have much more control, that you are the driver of your life, not the passenger. You are the driver of your life, not the passenger. So you don't need to be a victim of your own negative thinking, and you don't need to be a victim of things that have happened to you in the past. You have the ability to stop it, to say cancel when you have that negative thought, when you're telling yourself that it's impossible or it's, you know, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm a failure, whatever, whatever the negativity is, it's important for you to say cancel and move past that. Because if you don't, you're just cutting yourself off from really experiencing life at its fullest, right? So we're gonna allow our experiences to have a positive spin. And we're gonna allow ourselves to look at things from a different perspective, right? So it's all about reprogramming how we think. So that the tiger in the bushes, the one that wants to pounce on you, the negativity, we can, we can put it at bay, okay? And so that we can really, I think, run through life with a different perspective. So what we're talking about is creating a habit around positive thinking. This is not going to happen overnight. This is not going to happen. Uh, it can happen to some degree pretty quickly. You, you can catch yourself in that negative spiral of thinking or allowing what's happening around you to affect you and create some negative feelings. And, and like I said, I've been there. I'm not uh, any different than any of you. I want to normalize the, the negative thoughts or how you might be affected by something happening around you that's not pleasant. And I also want to share with you that you have the ability to say enough. And who's ready to do that? Who's ready to say enough? Right. So the first step is being aware that your thoughts are negative, that your thoughts are not serving you. Right. So that's what I want you to ask yourself. Are the thoughts that I, I, I have playing in my head most of the day really serving me or are they keeping me back? Are they stopping me from pursuing opportunity? Are they keeping me from trying new things? Are they telling me that I have no options? Because that's not true. We always have an option, right? And positive psychology is really about creating an awareness that we can change our thinking and change those pathways in our brain. And why is this so important? Well, because if we're ruminating in negative thoughts for too long, it's going to have an effect on us. It's going to have a physical effect on us. It's going to have an emotional effect on us. Uh, we know that people who are more positive, more optimistic, more realistic in their approach to life, uh, they experience better physical health. They have even a higher immune function. They have mental sharpness. They find that they're achieving success at a different level. They may even have healthier financial habits, uh, better or more satisfying relationships. 
And, and so all of those things are important. And the opposite is true, that those are the things that are at jeopardy if we are stuck in negative thinking for too long. So I don't know who needed to hear this message today, but I think if you can share your thoughts in the group uh, that you needed this or raise your hand or put a heart out there, give us, give us a sign. It'll encourage someone else who is thinking that they're the only one. And we're not alone in this, right? We can all benefit from this. So we have seen, uh, I've shared some statistics with you. We have seen study after study show us how being more optimistic can raise our um, lifespan by as much as four to 5%. I'll take it. Uh, it gives us a better likelihood of living past 90 uh, and gives us you know, much more opportunity to experience life, right? So I think those are some pretty amazing things. So all of those could be great benefits for you if you could work on cultivating an optimistic mindset. Now, I know that someone's sitting here saying that's easy for you to say. <laughs> and, and someone else might say, now there you go being negative, right? So uh, here's the thing. This is, this, is a, this is a work in progress. This is about working to override the current pattern that you might be in. And it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to say, I think I've been in this pattern of really negative thinking. I think that I, I'm in a pattern of, of thinking, you know, in terms of maybe a victim, right? And so again, you are in control. You're in the driver's seat. And if you're, if you, I just want to talk about that for a second, actually. Um, if you are thinking about that one, one uh, sentiment that it's time to be in the driver's seat of your life and not the passenger, you know that you're being the passenger when your thoughts sound like this, well, that's just the way it is right now. Not much I can do about it. I'm gonna have to wait and see how this plays out. Well, you know, I'm not the only one, right? You get it? Those are all signs of some thinking that has you sitting in the passenger seat of your own life. And while, yeah, there are a lot of things out there we can't control, I choose to believe that there are so many more things we can control. We just have to get clear about the difference and put our energy in the things we can control. I can control the way I think. I can control the way I respond to things. I have choices. If I don't like something, what are my options, right? And can I, can I make those decisions? And can I do what's right for me? And that's what you have to ask yourself. Can you allow yourself to, to separate what is happening around you, the circumstance, from who you are as a person? And work to cultivate this mindset of positivity. Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at do change, right? So it's, it's really a journey and a choice in choosing to be more optimistic and more positive. And, and some days it's more of a struggle than others. I'll admit that. But I think that the, the benefit from being more optimistic or more positive is certainly, uh, it certainly outweighs being uh, stuck in that, negative, in that negative pattern. Now, I also want to say that being positive is not about being unrealistic. This is not the Pollyanna version of life. And this is not also thinking that uh, manifestation means that we're positive and all this great stuff just falls from the sky. It, it's really about this being part of the process of you also being strategic of you also being action oriented, of you also having a vision around whatever your goals are, right? It's part of a bigger process, but it starts with how you think because what you're thinking becomes the lens you see life through. And so if you're seeing life with negativity, you're seeing life with limitations and you're seeing life with fewer options. And that's just not really true. I think that we have lots of opportunity around us, even in the craziest of times, even during a recession, we've seen that historically before. Uh, we, we have lots of options, even when there's uh, you know, just confusion around you know, what, what are the right things to do. So I think that this is an opportunity for you right now to get clear about what is important for you and how to live life more according to your values and how to win the day. 
I think that's also another, um, uh, there's someone on our leadership team who, who uses that phrase. So I'm gonna give Zoe a shout out. Uh, I love that win the day because you know we can also get lost in this concept of success and really get lost in some of our big lofty goals and get overwhelmed by it. And yet, if we can take our goals and our vision and chunk it down to what is the most important priority we need to accomplish this month, this week, today, how do we win today? I would think that we could allow each day to then take care of itself. So how will you win today? That's a great question for you to think about this morning. What are the things short list, okay, short list, because we want to think about priority, but what are the things that you can do today that when you lay down at night, when you go to bed tonight, you feel like you won the day? Write them down right now. Is it in your career? Is it in your personal life? Is it somewhere in a relationship? What is the most important thing that that you want to put focus on today and that you want to have a positive outlook on today? And how will you win, right? So, as we wrap up, I just want to give you, and, and some of this is not new, I just want to give you a couple of practical tips that will help you start this habit of positivity, okay? The first one, win the day. Focus on how to just be, be able to feel successful each day within the day itself. The, the second thing um, is to celebrate your wins and acknowledge that you're making progress, right? Because remember, it's not about perfection, but it is about making progress. So bring some intentional awareness to the successes you're achieving, those little wins, uh, and allow yourself to kind of, you know, savor that and relish that moment, because that will also build the habit of positivity. So celebrate your wins, acknowledge other people's wins too around you. Uh, the third one, we've, we've said this many times here on Mojo, practice gratitude, right? Because when you take time out each day to notice the good things happening around you, when you acknowledge the big and the little blessings that you have to be grateful for, it opens up your heart space. Okay, number four, share that appreciation with other people. That becomes even more powerful, right? So we can feel gratitude and that raises our emotional and vi um, uh, vibrational frequency. Uh, which which will go out into the world, but you will magnify and multiply that when you share your thoughts of gratitude, recognition, and praise with other people. So show people appreciation on a daily basis. Okay, number five, savor positive experiences. So I've talked about savoring before. That is part of what we teach in positive psychology. There's a difference between enjoying something and savoring it. And so savoring it is a deeper level of enjoyment, fulfillment. Um, and so when you savor it, you allow yourself to really kind of surround yourself with the emotions that that experience created, right? So when you savor experiences, I want you to relive how you felt. I, maybe you write about it, you have a picture of it uh, that you can uh, review and look at all the time so that you can really get back into the pleasure that that experience created for you. So you can draw on those experiences so that it changes how you feel and how you think, right? So so that's a big part of creating the positive, the habit of positivity. It's, it's all the things that we're doing to stay in that positive mindset. Okay. So savoring positive experience can be really positive, really powerful. Last, uh, last one, practice uh, this, this thought, expect good things, expect good things, practice this. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've worked on this uh, for many years. Because, for instance, there was a time in my life that whenever the phone rang, I expected it to be bad news. Like whether it was a family member, a friend, a coworker, I was I, I my my first thought was what's wrong, <laughs> and I realized like wow that is that's shocking, you know why am I expecting something bad to happen and and I don't know maybe that's just my experience but that was what happened to me. Uh, or what I was experiencing. And, and I really worked on this over the last several years to just continue to expect good things, expect positive things. Because when you find yourself in that worst case scenario thinking uh, for too long, it just cultivates a negative mindset. 
So I think that it's important for us to expect positive things, expect good things that can happen, practice this way of thinking, right? Practice believing that every situation can turn out well. Maybe you have to roll up your sleeves and work at it, but that you have the ability to figure it out, that you have the ability to change or turn it around, that when the phone rings, it's not something sad or bad. It could be an opportunity. It could be great. Somebody sharing great news with you. Um, so that that's my, my last tip for you today. So I hope that you found this to be uh, important, inspiring, thought provoking. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. Um, I, I think again, that being positive uh, is not something that we do uh, without having a belief that it's going to impact or change our world, right? So again, that this is an opportunity to create the habit of positive thinking and that it's because we wanna create opportunity. And, and being positive does not mean that we don't see the challenges around us. It, it's not putting rose colored glasses and only seeing certain things, but it, it means that we choose to say, even in the darkest of times, in the most adverse challenges, in the most confusing situations, we believe in ourselves enough that we have the ability to figure it out because we've got the experiences, we've got the knowledge, the skill set. And if we don't have all of the resources, we're also smart enough to find other people, places, and things that can help us with those resources, right? So at the end of the day, we have to believe that we can figure it out and that we have the power to change our thinking, which does have the ability to change the way the rest of our day flows. So I wish you a positive, powerful day. And uh, I appreciate all of you that uh, have joined me this morning or who are gonna watch us on replay. If you have thoughts, questions, please put it out there. Um, I see that there are a couple of comments here in the chat on Zoom. Yes, um, Jill says, sounds like a switch from victim mindset and then determine how believe in the new replacement message. Yes, absolutely. It's awareness and it's a, it's taking a moment to say, okay, what am I thinking? How am I feeling? Is this really helping or serving me? How can I change what I'm thinking or feeling so that I can move forward in a different direction? That's the replacement part. Um, now, uh, I, I see another question in the chat about... Um, would working with the folks that have post-traumatic stress syndrome, would this apply? So, um, you know, there are certain things that we have to be clear about, right? So I'm a coach and I help people with behavior and mindset and helping um, motivated individuals really see opportunity and give them the ability to self-discover some things and make some changes and move forward with new strategy, right? Um, there are some people who might need more than that or need other help first, like therapy and counseling. So when you have individuals who are, are dealing with um, anxiety at a high level or depression or post-traumatic stress syndrome, uh, some of these things may not be as easy to do until they have done some other uh, work or therapy. So, you know, I can't say that would it be, uh, it's not a blanket uh, solution for everyone in our population. But for most of, of the people who I think are connected to us, uh, I would like to think that these strategies could certainly help you. So thank you for these great questions. All right, everyone, I wish you a great day. I hope that you found this to be, I trust you found this to be uh, exactly what you needed. And if this is a great place for you to hang out, bring other people along, share the Facebook page, let them know about our Mojo sessions on Mondays. I love you and appreciate you. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and comments on the subject. All right, talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Goodbye, everyone.